All right, um, I see people. If you guys can let me know if you can hear me, that would be helpful. Um, I see my bar moving though, so I think everything is okay. Um, and yeah, this is just a Q&A session. So let me know those questions if you have any. Um, get them going right away because we're just answering and or asking and answering questions here today. Um, I did have one question already from Jennifer. I apologize for my loud snorty dogs. I have a French bulldog and a pug, so they both have short faces, so they're loud. Um, okay, Jennifer Thomas wasn't able to join the Q&A today, so she asked, I just took a picture of her question here. Um, I have pre-loved items I need to strip, absorbency test failed. The majority of the items are pre-folds and inserts. I read your article on stripping and was wondering if the ratio of 12 to 16 per packet of RLR still goes, um, or since they are, aren't are full diapers, can I put more inserts into the tub with one packet? Alone, I have 32 Elva bamboo inserts along with all the other things. Should I do it by weight instead? Um, if you're just doing inserts, sorry. Pre-loved pre items I need to strip. Majority pre-fold, yeah. If it's pre-folds and inserts, you should be fine. Um, for 32, that's that's about the same because, you know, the 12 to 16 is for covers and inserts. So, you know, you double that because you have two pieces of fabric in there. You really just want the water to be able to seep in and reach everywhere. So I think you're fine with that. If, I mean, yeah, I think you're fine. Um, also, I have a, just... Before well, before you go stripping, do check for detergent buildup as well. Um, if they're not absorbing because of detergent buildup, you might want to start rinsing um, instead of stripping. It might uh, speed things up just to rinse and get that out. But anyhow. Um, also, I have a water hardness of 100. How much should I reduce the detergent to prevent buildup? I am supposed to use two tablespoons of detergent for a medium-sized load. If it has moderate hardness. Okay, so I'm assuming that all your calculations are right. You've taken, taken a look at your washer size, divided your load up appropriately, or bulked your load appropriately, which is very rare, but, and everything, looked at your detergent and everything that way. Um, two tablespoons is not a lot. So I'm assuming you have a very small load in a very small washer. Um, and if you're looking to reduce for a hundred, Two tablespoons. Uh, one tablespoon is three teaspoons. So what? Six teaspoons. Maybe go down to five teaspoons. Or yeah, four or five teaspoons. So a little bit over a tablespoon. It, it sounds like you've already been washing. Um, so if you've already been washing, the number one rule is not to change your wash routine. If it's working, it's working. Don't don't touch it. Even I don't care where it came from. I don't care who gave it to you. If it's working, stick with it. That's the rule. Um, if you've already been washing and you have no problems with your existing inserts, I know you had problems with your used inserts that you just got, but if you're having no problems with what you're doing now, don't change it. If you are having buildup or if you haven't started yet, then yeah, maybe go down to, go down maybe like 10% or so. 100 isn't so bad. Just keep an eye on it. I hope that helps. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult with, you know, tablespoons and measuring. I know that's a pain in the bum to to measure it out like that. Um, it does seem like a very small amount, so I just worry about that. But otherwise, I hope that helps. If not, hit me back with more questions in, in that same chat we were talking in, and I'll answer again. Um, I see we only have a few people on here, and I'm not getting any questions. I hope it's working. Let me just check quick that it's working. Oh, and I see, hmm, I have a question here that hasn't popped up on my screen yet, but I do see it here. I have pre-loved diapers and I just bleach them. Do I need to do more? Just to beginners, just a beginner. Um, so you, okay, it's working, there's just a delay. Um, so for pre-loved, you definitely need to do the bleach, which you've already done, so you've sanitized them. Now you just need to uh, assess for yourself if you want to strip them. So when would you want to strip if the diapers seem dingy if they were smelly when you got them 
if um, they're not very absorbent. So if you drop a little bit of water on a dry one and it beads up, it doesn't go in to the fabric right away. Anything like that where you're thinking, okay, this person probably wasn't washing them properly or taking care of them properly, then you would want to just reset everything and do a strip as well. To do a strip, you need a sodium, sodium carbonate product like RLR or Rovia Mighty Bubbles. Um, and basically, you're just soaking it just like a bleach soak, but a little bit longer. You really want it to penetrate. Um, but definitely not necessary. The only thing that's absolutely necessary is the bleach soak, which you've already done, so you're set that way. I hope that helps. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's all I see. I'll give it some time. What can I talk about while we're waiting? Hmm. Hmm. Never mind. I think I have detergent buildup from using too much detergent. I'm going to clean my washer, but where do I start with the diapers? Well, first test them. So see where you're at, right? So take a clean, dry diaper, get a nice big bowl of warm water. Um, take that diaper, throw it in, squish it around, kind of move it around and see what's on the bowl. So if you see suds on the bowl or super cloudy water or anything like that, then you know you have build up and you can kind of judge by how much is left in the bowl, how bad it is. Um, if it's, you know, really, really bad, then you want to rinse, 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 rinse until the water runs clear. If it's only a little bit, then maybe you want to just do a strip and be done with it or just rinse them out a few times. If it's, it, yeah, you just get the, get the water running clear no matter what you do. Um, you want to get all of that soap out. Um, and then if you're, you're also saying that you're going to get the soap out of your washer, which is perfect, and then you just want to reset with a new routine where you measure everything. You're measuring your load size and your water hardness and your washer size so you don't bulk too much because all the other groups like to tell you to bulk, bulk, bulk until it's to a certain level, but no, that just means you're taking water away. Um, so yeah, just measure everything, come up with a solid routine. If you already have a measured routine and you're, and you have detergent buildup, then you know what to do. You've, you've taken the steps to learn. You know how you have to reduce even further and you'll be able to look at your sheet and tell how much more, what's the next step for a reduction. Um, I just started cloth last week. Yay. What's your name? I think I can see it. Paige. Congratulations. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that your claw journey is amazing and you save tons of money and your baby's bum is happy and if not come here and we will help you. Um, I've heard a good a good wash routine that the zinc cream won't stain but what's the best way to get it out? I have a couple of diapers I had to use the green bo I can't pronounce that word bo bo paste <laughs> on and there's definitely still a stain. Does it just go away after a few washes? So I did a huge cloth diaper cream experiment, um, sorry, last year, really, Shh. um, where I took a bunch of my new cart here, I just did a video on organizing all my diapers into a cart yesterday, that'll be out next week, um, so I took a bunch of newborn pre-folds and I put diaper creams on them, I put Vaseline, zinc cream, and two types of Two, yeah, two types of um, baby safe or cloth safe, sorry, uh, diaper cream on them. And I washed them all with a blank one as well. Um, I put that on 25, 25 or 24, I can't remember now, times and washed them. So cream, wash, cream, wash, using a cloth diaper wash routine. Um, the Vaseline was fine. The zinc didn't stain. It only, it slowed down the absorption, absorption a little tiny bit, but not much. So zinc is okay on natural fibers like cotton and whatever. I am currently doing a test now for synthetics. I think it will be different. That's my hypothesis. <laughs> but I'm going to do the same thing where I take pocket covers and cream wash, cream wash, cream wash. From experience, not going from actual looking at it, but from experience it will stain um, synthetics like you're talking about and the only way that I've been able to get it out is to take take your detergent that you're using in your cloth diaper wash, um, put it like on the diaper and just you're just gonna scrub. Use that elbow grease and scrub the 
crud out of it because it's a greased based grease based problem so using that using the I'm hoping you're that you're using liquid or else it's going to be really hard on your hands but um using that liquid as a pretreatment and scrubbing 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 will um, break it up and remove the grease and really help the detergent get in there so it can grab onto it and wash it clear unfortunately that's the best way that I've seen to get rid of it um but wait for part two where I if it is going to stay in that I'm going to look at how best to get rid of it. I'm going to try stripping it and all the things just to test it out and let you know what works best. Because that's what I love doing. I love taking all these opinions and things like stuff that we can't find data on. Like there's no actual data about what zinc does to cloth diapers. So I'm trying to create that by testing it and seeing what happens. Um... Sorry, I think I babbled a lot there. <laughs> so what was your question? Um, so what's the best way to get it out is to literally scrub it with some detergent. Um, hopefully liquid. If you do have powder, it's possible. But just maybe put rubber gloves on so you don't sting your hands up. Um, will it just go away after a few washes? Probably not. Um, you can try, but it's probably going to stay on there for a very long time. And you don't want anything on the surface of your diapers for a while or else other things can stick to it. So there's that. Um, can I use a dryer? Absolutely. I live in Canada. I would not cloth diaper if I didn't have a dryer. Um, you just want to watch the heat setting. So things like inserts that are natural fibers, cotton, hemp, bamboo, not bamboo charcoal, but hemp, cotton, bamboo can be thrown in the dryer. You don't have to worry about it. But other things like your microfiber inserts and all of your covers and pockets where this material is made out of plastic, it's plastic lined, your snaps, your Velcro, all your elastics, all that stuff is very sensitive to heat. So all of that stuff, medium or lower um, or hang dry if you can. But medium or lower for all of the plasticky stuff like your covers, um, your microfiber inserts, your charcoal bamboo inserts. But as long as you're medium or lower, go for it. Fill your boots. It's going to save you a lot of time. <laughs> um, you said there's no need to bulk. So what does it mean? Does that mean that my load does not need to be three quarters full to get my diapers clean? Absolutely. In fact, in some small washing machines, packing it to three quarters full is probably going to hurt you more than help you. Um, you're, you're, you have a set amount of diapers that you're washing and you have your washing machine has a capacity. You want to make sure that the diapers you're washing is not too small for your load. So you would need to bulk. So say you have a, let's take a random example and I'm going to get really technical here, but I do have an article and a worksheet to help figure all this out. So say you have your washer is two cubic feet. And that can be totally different from someone else's washing machine that has a four, four and a half cubic feet uh, measurement. So your two cubic foot washing machine, the minimum it has to have is two pounds of cloth diapers. The maximum is six pounds. So say you have a cloth diaper load and you're using, you know, fitteds and all-in-ones and all these heavy, heavy things. Chances are three quarters is more than six pounds. So even if you're bulking with lighter items, so you're putting too much in there, your washing machine will only put enough water to do six pounds of laundry. So it's just it's just a ratio, and I understand it's uh, it, <laughs> it's kind of subjective, but as far as cloth diaper laundry goes, this is really what works. Um, you want to follow the capacity of your washing machine for the weight of your diapers. So you're using weight, not volume, because bulking up to a three-quarter thing may mean that you have way more diapers than your washer can handle and you're not going to get enough water and water is what washes all the detergent away and all of the soil away if you don't have enough water it's not going to wash away so you're going to be left with detergent and soil and all that stuff on your diapers so go by weight um if you go on the cloth diapers for beginners website and go how to wash cloth diapers for beginners i take you through all of that um let's see if i have a worksheet here sorry um, I feel very lazy today. I didn't really prepare or anything. Um, 
So I have a wash worksheet for you where you're going to look at the size of your washing machine and look at the size of your cloth diaper load and see how they fit together. And then you're also going to look at separately your detergent and see how much that line one, line two, line whatever of detergent stacks up to how much di how many diapers you're washing, how large of a diaper load you're washing, so that you can measure everything properly. And then once you have that base amount, you're gonna you're gonna adjust it for your water hardness. So yeah, the other groups like to say you know bulk your load, but bulking your load just reduces the water, and they're giving you a generic wash routine. You're not measuring everything. It's just it's bad news. So don't bulk hate the bulking thing. <laughs> there are some instances where you would need to bulk, like say you're only washing a few diapers and you have that bigger machine and your minimum load needs to be like four and a half, five pounds, then you would need to bulk to make sure that you're getting it up to there just so that you have enough agitation because that drum in that washing machine is very big. Yeah, <laughs> I hope that answered your question without throwing you for too much of a loop. I know it's a lot to take in, but go through that article step by step, have the worksheet with you. I promise it's not as difficult as it seems when I'm just spewing it at you. <laughs> um, any info on that pink red diaper? My son's diapers tend to turn pink after they've sat for three days. Is that normal or is there an issue? There is an issue. I have yeah. not researched it yet. That's one of my blind spots, so I can't really talk about it. If I don't know about it, I don't talk about it. Um, but I know there has been some articles posted in the group, um, so searching those and looking at those would help. Um, it's on my list of things to look at. It's not normal. There is a way to fix it. I will try to find it for you if you don't, and I'll post it in your attached to your comment after. Um, but yeah, there is some help out there. I don't know anything about the, the issue or the fix, but um, I'll try and find that article for you. Can you use Dawn to remove the oil re oily residue? Um, I assume we're talking about zinc. Um, I do not recommend putting Dawn in your washing machine because it, A, will void your warranty. Your, your washing machine maker will not like that. Why they don't like it is, number two, it suds up. And anything that oversuds, that's why in an HE washing machine you need to use HE detergent because it suds less. So these low water condition washing machines, the HE machines, don't use enough water to properly rinse suds away. So anything that suds up is bad news for your washing machine. It's going to lead to soap buildup and that kind of thing. So no Dawn in your washing machine. If you would like to use Dawn by hand and rinse it out thoroughly, fill your boots. Um, it's going to be just as much scrubbing as using your detergent would be, so that's why I say use your detergent. But Dawn is real. I mean, Dawn is made for grease. It's really good at getting grease spots out. Just don't put it in your washing machine. Um, I was wondering this too. Awesome. I've noticed. God, you're so loud, dude. <laughs> I've been noticing I'm getting fuzzies on my cloth diaper. How do I get that off with the inside of the diaper before putting them on my baby girl? Yeah, it's just the, the fabric. It's probably more of a fleecy lining. It's not a big deal. It won't hurt your baby. It won't hurt your whatever. Um, just use a, like a fabric razor. Um, they have handheld ones or they have the fuzzy buzz machines as well. You can get them at like Walmart. Um, in the, um, you know, the laundry aisle where they have like clothespins and stuff. They have all that stuff there. Just use a, a lint remover. That's all it is. It won't hurt anything though. Ah, you're so loud. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think that's the list. I don't think I missed anything. Oh, my phone just went crazy. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, so those are the questions that I have. If anybody else has anything or if I've totally confused you about the whole washing thing, the bulking thing, let me know. Um, I wonder if I can clear anything up just going through the sheet. So let's just go through the sheet. Let's just see what happens. So this is the walk, wash worksheet. And in the article that I mentioned, I take you through it step by step. If you need more instruction than that, I do also have a wash and care handbook that um, is paid. 
um, that you can get off the website as well. And this literally takes you through step by step and it talks about all things wash and care. Um, but for free on the website, go to that um, article and I take you through this step by step by step. Step one, you're going to think about how many diapers you're washing. And if you don't have baby yet, <laughs> there is an article that I link out to that will kind of go through the averages of how many diapers you're going to use. So find out the average you think you're going to use a quart and also break it down Think about how many days you're going between washes. So if you're like, okay, baby's coming, I'm gonna start when they're a newborn, I'm probably gonna wash every two days or so. And just looking at that approximation. Where is it? Sorry guys. Where is it? I have so many cheat sheets, I can't find them all. So I have, I'm going to start as a newborn and I'm going to wash every two days or so. So you're probably going to be washing about 28 diapers. So according to what how, what you think you're going to use and what diapers you have, you're going to get a weight approximation. Um, but that's in a later step. So <laughs> you're going to write down um, how many diapers do you think you're going to use. Oh no, that's a step. And um, what types of diapers or whatever there's a chart in that article that gives you some weights you're going to add them all up and come up with a total weight for your cloth diaper load um, and then you're going to come back here and you're going to look at your washing machine and you're going to find either online or on the machine there's like stickers in the manual you're going to find a cubic foot usually a cubic foot uh measurement um so you write that down here and then you multiply that to get the the minimum, the medium, and the large weights for your washing machine. So say you have a four cubic foot washing machine, your small is going your small loads are going to be four pounds of diapers, medium is eight, and large would be twelve. So that stuff. Step three, you're going to look literally look at the back of your box of detergent and you're gonna look for the measurements they have there. Some detergents will have three measurements. Tide, for example, says a regular load is line one, a whatever large load is line three, and an extra large or whatever they call it is line five. Don't pay attention to what they call it. If they give you three numbers, put it in small, medium, large. If they give you two numbers, put it in medium and large. Don't pay attention to what the wording is. Um, and so you're gonna put that in there. And then you're gonna look at all the numbers together and see what you've got. So you've got tw 12 pounds of diapers, it comes out to because you're washing every two days and you're using pockets, so that's roughly about that. Look at the weights though. Um, and your wash machine is four cubic feet, so a large load happens to be 12, so that's a perfect large load. Perfect, you're golden, you do not have to bulk. It will look like less, it could look less than three quarters full, in fact it probably will. You do not bulk because you're going to be, have your load is gonna be too big and not have enough water. So that's your maximum. If your washing machine is um, non-HE and you have to change, like select the load size, you're gonna select large. There you go, that's set. Your washing machine is all set. If you added up all your diapers you were washing every day and you still had that four cubic foot washing machine and you only had three pounds of diapers altogether. I don't know if that would happen, but if you have only three, then yes, you would want to bulk. And I do have some weights of some common things like t-shirts and towels and stuff on there that you can use. That would be the only instance where you want to bulk. You want to make sure you're meeting that minimum um, because likely it's you have a giant washer and you need to get some agitation in there. Okay, whew. and then, so your washing machine is set. Now let's look at the detergent. So again, looking at the numbers that you've written down, say I have those 12 pounds of diapers again. Um, for detergent, a small load is about six pounds, a medium is about 11 pounds, and a large is 21 pounds of, of diapers. You're very, very, unless you have a commercial detergent, or sorry, a commercial washing machine, you're not gonna use a, size, a large uh, tide measurement of, because tide has the three. A large tide measurement of detergent. That's marketing, that's getting you to use way too much detergent for your laundry. Anyhow, I digress. So 
uh, you have about 12 loads, so that's just over a medium uh, measurement. So if you're using tie, that would be line three. So your base measurement would be just over line three. And then you take a look at your water, you get a test kit, or you take it this water sample to a pet store or a pool store and you get it tested. They're gonna give you a water hardness number and you can plot that along this graph here. And it's gonna say, okay, if your water is less than 125 ppm, which is the number they'll give you, don't worry about it. It's parts per million, but you don't need to think about it. Um, chart it there, if it's 180 or over, chart it there and it's gonna give you an approximation of how much you want to reduce it or bump it up. Um, if you're in the middle, you don't gotta do anything. So yeah, so say your water is 100, like the other person's there, you wanna reduce it slightly. So since you're already over the medium, you'd probably wanna stick with the medium. So you'd probably wanna stick with your line three, don't go above it at all. Whew. And then you're gonna come to the next page and you're gonna say, okay, my water was 100. So that put me in the soft water category. So I'm only using this box. So my routine will be rinse and spin, hot, heavy duty wash, or whatever the equivalent is on your machine's washing panel, it doesn't really matter. Just pick the heaviest duty wash and put it on hot if you can. Um, and my detergent level is line three, then I do another rinse and spin and I dry. Easy peasy, bumpy squeezy as my daughter would say, all done. The wonderful thing about this is as baby goes, gets older and you know uses different amounts of diapers per day or you change your wash routine or anything like that, you can come back to the sheet and adjust your routine because all of those things will change how you measure everything. So if things change drastically and you're going from washing every two days to washing every four days, which I wouldn't always recommend, but then you're going to come back and say, okay, I have to recalculate how many diapers I'm washing and see how that fits in with my detergent and with my washing machine. I hope I didn't confuse the Jesus out of you with that. I hope it was helpful. Um, but if you have any questions, let me know. Let's go. We have been getting questions as I went through all of that. So let me have a look. All right. Thank you, I've been getting frustrated. You are most welcome. I know some of these things are very frustrating. Um, I'm getting a portable washing machine to wash my diapers. Any experience with this? They are great. There is a new one coming out from the laundry. Why am I blanking on their name? Um, the people that make the, the crank washer. Why the laundry alternative? Gosh, blank. Um, they're coming out with one that was designed with um, cloth diapers in mind that I'm talking to them and hoping hoping I'm going to be testing it. Um, but in general, they're great. They work very, very well. Just make sure you follow that um, the size requirements for them. So usually for a portable washer, it will give you a pound um, maximum. So you can just go ahead and skip step one and put in the, the large load as your maximum pound in there and kind of reduce it by two and, or sorry, yeah, by two and by three for the other ones. So yeah, no problems there. You're going to love it. Um, a lot of people love them, especially because you can use it as kind of dirty diaper storage as well. Um, my daughter is pee has been smelling like straight ammonia. Should I spray her pee diapers off just like I do with her poop diapers? You can, that will help. Check for detergent buildup would be my first recommendation. So get that, do a swoosh test with that big bowl of warm water. Put your clean, dry insert in, squish it around, see what comes out. Ammonia most often, but not always, is caused by detergent buildup. So check for that, number one. If it is detergent, you, the solution is gonna be rinsing, rinsing, rinsing until that detergent is out and adjusting your wash routine. If there is no buildup, um, everything's good that way. It could be something related to storage. So make sure that you're not storing them for too long in too hot, too humid, too closed off conditions. That can be a big cause as well. If you know, you're know you using a bin with open holes and there's no detergent um, problem, it's probably something like, met I say medical, but you know, like they could be on medication, they could be um, dehydrated at night and the nighttime diapers are naturally soaked uh, plenty and everything hot and um, wet for 12 to 14 hours so that can make ammonia a lot um, probably something like that and then yes in those cases 
spraying it with something can um, help. Um, you can spray it off with water or if you want, you can also get like a back out spray or just a Viginer spray. And yes, I say Viginer wrong, <laughs> a Viginer spray. I find that if you spray ammonia diapers with Viginer, um, it will change it chemically from ammonia back to uric acid, but it smells like a dirty bar. So I don't find that incredibly helpful, but that's an option. You can neutralize it that way, get your pH a little bit better. Um, all options. Um, hi, hello. <laughs> um, I don't see everybody's names on here and my phone kicked me off. So um, I don't know your names. So when you say hello, I, I say hello, but I don't know who it is until I go back after <laughs> and see the name. Um, what's the best thing to use to clean my washer? I usually use Tide washing machine cleaner, but I've heard of others. Yep, there's lots. There's um, Afresh. There's a few others. Usually it's like a citric acid product. Um, you can use Viginer if uh, you're not too worried about your washing machine warranty. Um, anything that will kind of neutralize the detergent and all of that in your washing machine is what you're going to want. So you're going to want like a slight acid. That makes sense. Um, because detergents are bases. Very, yeah. <laughs> I know I'm using words that maybe are you're like, what? But yeah. Um, can I use RLR soak my diapers in my washing machine? Absolutely. It works really good if you have a top loader. So you put all your stuff in, let it fill up, put your RLR in, and then just leave the lid up and leave it on pause for however long. And then the nice thing is if you have a washer that like starts again when you close the lid then you can be every couple of hours you can kind of go down close the lid and let it swoosh around a bit and then lift it back up saves you all the time and energy um yeah so you can do that absolutely if it's a just make sure you have enough water in there so it's there's a problem with the HE washing machines that you won't have a lot of water in there so just try and get enough water in there I plan to you to buy pre-used diapers on Monday and I heard you really need to bleach them. Absolutely. Do I just add bleach to my load or bleach them in another way? Um, you do want to soak them for a bit in the bleach. I do have um, instructions on the website. If you just search for used, it'll pop up. How do I clean my used diapers? So you definitely want to do a bleach soak. Um, it's You're talking about like half a cup of bleach soaking. It will not, excuse me, it will not affect your PUL or anything like that. You want to do the um, do that so that you're killing any possible infectious stuff on there. So viruses and um, yeast, uh, candida spores, that type of thing. You want to just kill all that and make sure there's nothing on there. My brain hurts. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's you definitely want to give them a bit of a soak. And I have I forget all the measurements and everything on there. You can do it in your washing machine, like I just said, like lift the lid up, let it, you know, or you can do it in a tub. Um, do that and then also look at your, the diapers that you get and see how, if they're dingy, if they're smelly, anything like that, you might also want to just drip, but it's not necessary. Um, I keep getting poop residue in my diapers even if I run them through a rinse cycle before washing. So, you need to take the poop off your diapers before you put them in your machine. So there's a bunch of ways to do this. Lots of people have cloth diaper sprayers. Um, I'm assuming that your baby's on solids. If your baby has EBF and you're finding that uh, you're getting a residue, that's very odd because EBF is water soluble. So there's something else going on there. Um, Either baby is taking in something or there's a wash issue. So let me know if it's EBF, but I'm assuming that it's baby is eating formula or solids. So then you would need to make sure that you're taking all the poop off uh, the diapers because poop on your diapers in the machine is poop in your machine. Like it's not going to break down in any way. It's just poop. So <laughs> um, a lot of people use cloth diaper sprayers. That's the most convenient way. It's kind of like the luxury way. <laughs> you don't need that though. You can um, just take the diaper. So you're, this is a bad example. You're gonna take your diaper and it's got all the poop here. You're gonna flip it around like this and hold it like this and dunk it in your toilet and swoosh it around as much as you can until it all comes off. Um, some people will use uh, disposable liners. 
I love having everything handy and accessible. So disposable liners like this that are made from a bamboo viscose, they're, they're marketed as flushable. Do not flush them. You will either block up your septic or you will increase your property taxes because it's plugging up the sewer system. Um, and you just lay it in and then baby poops and then you pick it up and toss it and then it's much less uh, waste on there to get rid of. Some people use scrapers. You can use a peri bottle as a kind of makeshift sprayer. Just whatever you can to get 99% of the poop off before you're putting it in your washing machine because what poop in the washing machine will be poop out of the washing machine. Um, so yeah, my brain hurts. I'm very sorry that I hurt your brain. <laughs> I, I, I really hope that true beginners weren't listening to that spiel because you don't need to go there yet. Just get wrap your head around the basics, the type of diapers what, that you do want, cloth diaper, that type of thing. Don't let the wash craziness overwhelm you right away. Okay, even when I use disposables, it smells like ammonia. Okay, so yeah, that's something, something internal. Um, you might, if you, especially if it's in disposables as well, you might want to talk about it with your pediatrician because it could be something deeper medical going on, like an actual condition or something, not to scare you, but it could be. You just want to check to make sure. Um, make sure your baby is getting enough fluids. Um, yeah, just talk to your pediatrician in that case because something else is going on there and you just want to make sure you're covering your bases. You're not letting anything fester. Um, we recently had a rash. How do I clean the diapers? Can bleach be used on more than just the liners without discoloring them? Okay, we recently had a rash. How do I clean the diapers? Depends what the rash was. If it's a yeast rash, you do need to use bleach. If it's not a yeast rash, I don't recommend bleach because it could be, if it's an ammonia rash or something like that, I think I still look like in my hair. Um, if it's ammonia rash or something like that, adding bleach will make, could make things worse. So don't use bleach for every instance. But if it's a yeast rash or something like that, that you need to kill the, in, the infection, then yes, use bleach. Um, if it's not, just make sure your diapers are coming out clean, they're not smelly, they're not dingy, that type of thing, and deal with the rash. Um, can can bleach be used on more just the liners whether it's called discoloring? Yes, absolutely. Your PUL will not fade with uh, bleach. I know it's crazy and I was everyone's worried about it at first, but it won't do anything to the colors on your, your PUL. Um, so bleach everything. If it's yeast, you bleach everything. Wool is a different story. You have to, yeah, but everything. Um, I had, uh, oh! Oh, sorry. I thought I had names for a minute, but no, someone, Tabitha was kind enough to write her name. Tabitha Ashley Kendall said, I had, or no, she was speaking to, okay. Old lady. She was speaking to Tabitha, who I guess asked the question, and she said, I highly recommend a sprayer. They are the best. Yes, they are the best. They're, you can't go wrong. It's definitely an added expense, and they're not cheap, and you have to install them, but they really do make everything easier. Just make sure you get a spray guard. So either buy the splash guard that they sell, which are kind of expensive, or go to the dollar store, get a cheap garbage can, and cut out the bottom and get two um, clips, either binder clips or... Um, uh, God, I'm blanking today, or um, clothespins, like really heavy duty clothespins. Something to clip the diaper to, you hang it inside the trash can and then you spray just so it doesn't splatter everywhere. He is breastfed, okay, so you're getting your EBF and you're getting kind of a residue on everything. <sighs> yeah, okay, so I would start by rinsing it off, getting it all off, and then washing them and see what happens there. Are you using a like a homemade soap or a Charlie's soap or a Rock and Green or something like that, Nelly soap? Because that will give you a film 100%. That will create that film with all the dirt. That's why we don't use them. We need a detergent with cervicants. Um, so if that's the case, that's your solution right there. You change to a regular detergent and clean everything as much as you can to get that residue from the soap out of your machine, off your diapers. Um, so you probably a strip to get rid of the soap film. 
So that could be a cause. If you are using a detergent, then yeah, start spraying everything off. Wash your diapers and see what's there. If they're smelly, if they're greasy, if there's something else going on, you'll be able to better figure it out without the poop all over it. Um, but yeah, there's something, there's something wrong somewhere with the washing part, I would assume. Unless, well, no, it wouldn't matter. It's still, or it could be, it could be so many things. It could be that you're bulking your wash and you have too much in there and there's not enough water because yes, the poop is water soluble, but you need enough water. So make sure that you're calculating your load size to your washer properly that way. It could be a few things. So yeah. Um, if you have any more information, let me know. But if if none of those things fit, if you're not using soap, if you if you measured everything correctly, I would start by just washing it off and seeing how they wash without the poop on them, just as kind of a test. Um, hey, hey, <laughs> he's 11 weeks and breastfed. Yeah. Um, can you use OxyClean on diapers? Sure. Um, go for it. It doesn't work very well if you're trying to get like stains and stuff off of them. It doesn't work very well. I don't know why. It sounds so hokey and I feel like kind of silly saying it, but if you're getting like EBF stains or just poop stains on there, really the best thing to remove the stains is the sun. I know it sounds crazy, but take your wet diaper and throw it in the sun to dry and it, it works better than anything. It works better than the OxyClean, even the peroxide um, stain lifters. It works amazingly well. But you can use OxyClean. Go for it. Um, so if a rash is not yeast, I can't be sure, then you do a regular wash. Yeah, you just want to make sure that your diaper is getting completely clean. You have no smells. You have no buildup of any kind. Just make sure they're coming out squeaky clean. And then it's really just dealing with a rash. Um, rashes can be caused by so many things. They can be, yes, they can be caused by wash routines and stuff on your diapers. But they can also be caused by, you know, food sensitivities, they can be caused by fabric sensitivities, they can be caused by detergent sensitivities, like there's so many things that can cause a rash that, yeah, don't, I hope you're not thinking that that would probably be the cause. Um, but yeah, just clean the diaper, make sure you're dealing with the rash, don't worry too much about bleaching if it's not yeast or anything like that. Um... I use chip bags when I use my spray and I cut out a hole in a small trash can. Chip bags when you use your spray. How does, how does that work? Like you put your diaper in a chip bag? Because you said you use a, a trash can too. I'm interested. I don't know what that means, but that sounds really cool. I'm sure it's like the, the coolest hack ever. I just don't know what you mean. Um, yeah, let me know. That's a new thing. Um, chip bags. I use seventh generation. Okay, so okay, seventh generation should be fine. Um, it, it's not a soap. It should rinse clean. So something else is going on there. Uh, I don't know. Try try taking the poop off, like all your diapers for a load. Wash them and see what comes out, and then hit me back because there's something going on there. Or, I know, I is is he exclusively breastfed, or has he has any any formula, any medications, anything like that? That could change the poop as well. But I'm assuming that he's EBF and you're fine. Um, if you use liners for newborns, should you fold them or cut them? Whatever you like. Um, if you cut them, then you have more. But it's totally up to you. If you fold them, they'll be thicker. It, if you're talking about disposable liners, folding them won't affect the, the, the wicking at all. So you don't have to worry about it that way. Um... Um, if you're using the liner for mercodium or anything like that, don't worry about mercodium. It also is water soluble like EBF, so it it's fine. Even if it does stain a little bit, just the sun like I was talking about, and you're fine. So don't feel like you need to use liners for that. Um, chip bag. Oh, chip bag clips. Yes, yes. You can get them at the Dollar Tree for like four in a pack. Yes, those are good because they're stronger, right? Excellent. Excellent idea. No formula and no meds. So it's something wash related, I would think. Either too much in the machine or something. something's going on there. Uh, oh, he's so loud. 
<laughs> All right. Ooh, what time is it? We're, ooh, it's 10.48. See, I was worried there was going to be no questions, and you guys have a thousand questions. You guys are awesome. So awesome. Um... All right, well, I'll wait a few minutes and see if there's anything else, but if not, um, I think we did good. <laughs> also, for newborn covers, pre-folds, for newborn covers and pre-folds, oh, a bunch just popped in. There's such a delay here. Um, also, for newborn covers pre and pre-folds, clothies, should I go with the newborn or newbies, and can they be tri-folded for brand new babies? I don't know of the G, the in the GMD. I don't know the differences between the newborn or newbies, um, so I'm not entirely sure. You you can go go for the if you're planning on diapering from day one. Don't be afraid of the super small sizes because a baby is going to be way smaller than you think, and b those newborn pre folds. You're going to use them forever. I say they're like the Swiss army knife of cloth diapering because they are perfect insert size as well. So you're going to be using these as the actual diaper when he's a newborn or she is a newborn. And then you can use them as a booster in diapers from then until eternity because cotton is a really great material. It's very absorbent. So I was using these specific ones in my daughter's training pants. When we were trying out different um, bedtime training pants, I was stuffing these in them because they were just a great size and they're absorbent. So yeah, don't be afraid to get the small size, especially in the pre-folds. Newborn, like all the ones and stuff is a different conversation, but newborn pre-folds, you're going to use them. Don't be afraid of the small sizes. I don't myself know the difference between the GMD. I, the, they are on my list of things to buy because it's a great brand and the quality is fantastic. But I, right now, don't know the difference between the two um, to be able to tell you. Maybe someone else here does. I missed the best way to get ammonia out. I'm sorry, but can you repeat with the Coles Note version? So it depends what's causing the ammonia. The most um, common cause of ammonia is detergent buildup. So you want to do a swoosh test where you get a bowl of warm water, take your clean insert, swoosh it around, squeeze it, and see if any soap comes out. If that's the case, that's the cause of your ammonia. But it can be caused by a lot of things. It can be caused by storage conditions. So if, you know, you live in Florida, it's hot and humid all the time, and you have it in a diaper decor for four days, you're probably going to have an ammonia stink. Um, you want to make sure there's lots of air and um, it's cool in your storage container, especially if you're not, if you're washing every day, then that's not the problem. But if you're washing every few days, then make sure you get lots of air in there. Um, it can also be caused by things like dehydration, um, you know, especially at night. It can be caused by even just nighttime diapers are more prone to ammonia because baby is peeing several times a night. It's a hot, humid diaper that they're in for like 12 to 14 hours. It's just like the perfect conditions. So if there's, yeah, that can cause ammonia. Um, there's also like actual medical conditions that can cause ammonia smell in urine. There's a lot of, a lot of things that can be going on. Um, most often it's a buildup, a detergent buildup issue, but yeah, just to make you aware of all the things that it could be. And obviously if it's a, you just want to make sure baby is getting enough, uh, fluids. If it's a nighttime thing, rinsing your diapers out using like a back out or something like that. Or and if it's something that's happening day and night and you can't pin it down, make sure baby's getting enough fluids and then maybe make a, uh, an appointment with your pediatrician. I use pocket diapers, but I have been looking at all-in-ones. What's the... Oh, sorry. And my, just clicked in my brain. How is it... You have to get it out. No matter where it came from, you have to get it out, right? So if it's not detergent buildup and you just need to remove the um, ammonia from your diapers, you can use a back out and something like that, or you can use Viginer as well. Um, and I have an article on that in the website as well. You can use it as a rinse in if you have soft water in your first rinse, um, or if you have... Uh, Hard water, you can use it just as your rinse, and that will help neutralize it and take it out for sure. Um, but don't use that as the fix. Find the cause. Um, I use pocket diapers, but I have been looking at all-in-ones. What's the biggest difference? Are they better? 
Uh, personally, I would rather do an all-in-one than a pocket, but it's it comes down to personal preference. They're both really awesome for, um, sorry, one second, for grandparents and reluctant dads and babysitters and all those people. So the, the only real difference is um, a pocket diaper has an opening between the PUL and the inner lining that they have. Um, and you're going to take whatever combination of inserts you want and stuff it in there so that it makes it just like an all-in-one, basically. So you stuff her in there, do to do make sure it's all nice and flat, and then it's ready to put on baby just like that. Um, and all-in-one, there's no stuffing. So you have your diaper. Usually they will have one or two tongues like this. Um, this random one, you can put it inside or to give you different textures, you can put it inside or lay it on the outside. Most of them will just lay on the outside. Um, and then it's ready to go on your baby just like that. Um, the differences between the two, they're both limited in the amount of absorbency. Usually in all in one, the brands are more cognizant of they need to include a lot of absorbency for these to work. So they tend to be made of better materials. They tend to be made of natural materials, more absorbent. They tend to have more layers. So there's that. Um, pocket diapers tend to be cheap and tend to come with microfiber and that that type of thing. So you have to, you usually have, unless you get a really good brand like a Thirsties or um, a Bungie's or that kind of thing, most pocket diapers come just cheap microfiber inserts. Um, so you'll need to buy additional inserts and they kind of boost about, blah, blah, blah. they kind of boast about their, um, you know, flexibility, but pocket diapers are really not that flexible. There's only so much room you can, you have in here. Um, so yes, you can add more absorbency, but there is a limit before you start pushing the elastic out of the leg. So yeah, they are a little bit easier to wash. They're a little bit easier to wash in that you can take the inserts out so they're they're quicker to dry that way and you get more detergent and water on the inserts but you also normally get cheap inserts with pocket diapers so and microfiber and that is difficult to wash so it kind of comes out equal but these will take a lot longer to dry. So those are the main differences. I don't know if that helps you. Um, these are also usually a lot cheaper, but again, you have to buy um, additional inserts most of the time. And these are usually pretty expensive because they know that you're looking for convenience of an all-in-one, that you don't have to do anything else to it. So they charge a bit more. Um, And I realize now that I didn't have to explain the whole pocket thing to you that you knew it, but there you go <laughs> for anybody else that's watching, watching. Um, my washing machine is really old, could and crappy. I don't know what you mean by that, but yeah, sometimes the older machines wash better than the newer machines because they add more water, right? They're not that HE. And back in the day, that's how they used to get everything so clean is because they were using a ton of water. That's why they could use the soaps and everything like that because there was enough water to wash everything away. So don't, don't, don't hate on your old machine so much. Sometimes they're good. It's an old HE machine though. Nah, nah, nah. Um, do you think the hospital sink is strong enough to rinse brand new poop off a flour sack towel? Uh, sure, but you don't necessarily have to. If it's a meconium or EBF, you don't have to. You can throw it right in your bag. It's water soluble. It will come off. I know meconium is, is scary, but it will come off. Um, it very rarely stains, but if it does, put it in the sun to dry and you'll be fine. But I don't know. Um, newborn poop is pretty, pretty, it's like runny and like everywhere. Makes sense. So it should it should come off fairly easily. It's water soluble, so that will help rinse it off. It should be fine. I don't know what this what sink they have. I'm thinking like old school knobs with a little handle, but I don't know. Um, I need to replace my elastics in the legs and back. I have flip covers. What type of elastic should I buy? Do I do four to four point five inch 
on both the leg and back. I don't, I'm not a sewer. I really, I can't sew to save my life. I usually break every sewing machine that I touch, so I try not to touch them anymore. Um, I have a flip cover here. But I go by somebody either here or on YouTube probably has some information about what exactly to buy. I, it looks to me to be the same size, but I could be wrong. Um, take it out and measure it once you take, like, yeah, that's what I would do. Just take it out and measure it or search in the group or online. YouTube has videos on how to fix all kinds of diapers. So if you search there, that's probably your best bet. Um, sorry, I wasn't very helpful. What is the longest you would be comfortable leaving a diaper in a pail? It depends what kind of pail. Um, if you're talking about, you know, those garbage pails with holes all over them, you could leave it in there for a good four, maybe five days. If you got a, a wet bag in there or if you're using a wet bag, your maximum would be three, four days. If you're using a trash can with a lid and a diaper pail liner inside, three days. If you're using a diaper decor or um, an ubi or something with a liner inside, one to two days max because you're not getting that airflow in there, which is part of, you know, their draw because you're not getting any airflow. So you're not getting any smells whatsoever coming out of them. But you do need to wash way more often because that moisture is going to create mildew and bacteria build up. So the more air you have, the longer it can go. Um, because you're not giving that the mold and the bacteria those conditions for you know those perfect conditions for growth and craziness um, I'm so thankful for this thank you you are most welcome I am so thankful <laughs> that I get to do this and you guys come on and actually ask me all these questions and I hope it's helpful so that's wonderful to hear thank you um, how do I make sure the PUL in my diapers are good they're pre-loved uh, so there's a few things so I'm gonna use a wet bag for this because it's easier and I have one that's somewhere cred I have one that's falling apart but it's not on there darn it I guess I got to keep those things in there um so you're gonna look at your cover did you say if you're using covers so look at the PUL if it's in a pocket diaper just you know pull the pocket open and have a look and you're going to make sure there's no big bubbling on it if it's bubbling then it's no good you also want to kind of pull it a little bit and see if there's any cracks or anything that would be no good as well. Um, basically any cracking, bubbling, that type of thing. If there's any holes, obviously, you just wanna make sure that the lamination is complete and there's no breaks in it. Um, and that's pretty much it. And also if you're buying pre-loved and you wanna check, also check your elastics. Give them a feel, make sure they're not rolled up inside, um, stretch them a few times, make sure they have a good spring back. It should be springing back at least like an inch um, and make sure there's obviously there's no cracking or anything like that. So check the elastics as well. Make sure the Velcro if they're um, hook and loop that it's not cracking or it feels stiff and you know crumbly like that. Um, thank you, thank you. You guys are awesome. Uh, what is better for newborn infants? All-in-one pockets fitted, not confident, I can do flats. Okay, um, all-in-one pockets or fitted. I love, 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 love fitted diapers, 100%. They are like my personal favorite. They're, they're so absorbent and they're so just perfect to put on. I just love them. For a newborn, the cost of them is pretty expensive for... I, I, and you're changing baby so often, like they're, they're constantly feeding and they're constantly wetting. I feel like maybe the expense is not justified so much for a newborn. My, that's my personal opinion. If you have the budget for it, fitteds are the way to go. Um, all in one pockets. There are better all in one newborn diapers out there than there are newborn pockets. So I would tend to say all in one. I don't have a lot of experience with um, newborn diapers. That's on my kind of list of things to to look into more. But in general, the tendency is a little bit better quality in the all-in-ones. I had when my baby was little, I did do um, newborn pre-folds. 
they fit the, they were the first things to fit right out of the gate. Um, but I know you're not into, you're not into flats. Prefolds are a little bit different, right? So a flat diaper. So just, they, they wouldn't be this big for newborns, but a flat diaper is literally like a flat piece of fabric that you're folding up. Whereas a prefold is pre-folded. So you can just like either fold it in this way or put it on baby like that. Um, so I don't know if that makes you a little bit more comfortable. I did find, just starting out, I found that using pre-folds right out of the gate, I had a harder time getting into them and I felt like they were leaving baby uncomfortable and I didn't really know what I was doing. I had a harder time getting into cloth diapers using those. Now, stepping back, knowing what I do, knowing what all the information I have and knowing how things work and testing it when she was older and all of that, I love pre-folds so much better than the all-in-one and all that. But I, the whole point is when I was getting into it, it was kind of tougher to start with those types of diapers. So I would probably go with an all-in-one or a pocket. Um, and yeah, I would lean towards all-in-one if that helps. Um, but I'm sure there are lots more opinions. And if you post that in the group, you're going to get uh, a lot more advice from moms who have done a lot more newborn cloth diapering than I have. Um, when stuffing a pocket diaper for a small child, do you snap the snaps on the front before or after you stuff it? Oh, um, up to you. I found it easier to snap it first, um, just because you could kind of get a, an idea of where you had to like fit everything, but it doesn't matter. It's up to you, whatever you feel more comfortable with. If it's easier to stuff for you to get your hands in there on the particular diaper to open it up and then stuff it in, dealer's choice. Um, whatever you prefer. I, I, I guess probably a lot of it was laziness. I never moved my snaps until I had to. So like I wasn't unsnapping for laundry or anything like that. They just kind of stayed snapped until I didn't have to unsnap them. And don't be afraid to move the snaps though. A lot of people ask me when, you know, they should be moving baby up in snaps. Don't, don't hesitate. If you feel like it would fit better if you up the snaps, up the snaps. Baby is going to be getting fat and thin and tall and they're gonna grow so much you might find that you let the snaps out and then put them back in after don't don't get the fit don't worry about you know it's always sad when our baby feels like they're getting bigger but well is getting bigger but don't fear moving the snaps uh, can you please repeat the name of the ammonia rinses you use I'd like to write them down yeah so back out um, B-A-C hyphen O-U-T is one option or just plain Vigner. Um, you know, the big bottle of vinegar that you get at the grocery store. Um, I used Grovia bubbles. Okay. I don't remember what we're talking about there. You used Grovia bubbles for what? Sorry. I, I lost the, the train of thought, I think. Um. I think that's it for now and we're past 11 you guys are awesome you guys keep the questions coming and you you ask amazing questions and you guys are awesome thank you so much for wearing out my jaw today <laughs> I hope I didn't make everybody's head explode I know I made one person's head explode <laughs> but um keep asking questions um we can help you in the group as well this is why I'm doing this though because I can't get in there and answer all there's literally hundreds of posts every day so it's very hard for me to you know answer a lot so this is what I'm doing this for but there's lots of um helpful people in the group don't take every answer you get in the group as fantastic advice always ask you know where they got that information from and you know especially with the like the washing questions and stuff ask them where that they got that information from and then try and see if it's a legit thing but um yeah keep asking questions the group is awesome you guys are awesome thank you so much for joining me today i will try to do another well i'll try to i'm um, it's getting a little bit crazy here with the COVID lockdowns and whatnot. So I'm going to try to do another one on YouTube next week. Um, and then another one on Facebook. It wouldn't be the following week because, well, yeah. I'll try and keep up a one-one ratio, but the next couple weeks might be a little bit crazy with COVID and lockdowns and 
our moved March break happening possibly in April, though it might be, anyway. I'll keep you posted in the group, but I will try to do at least another one of these next week on YouTube. So I'll put the link for that um, if you wanna hop on by. On YouTube, I tend to do a little bit of a lecture too, um, just because the nature of YouTube. Um, okay, I'm rambling, <laughs> as I tend to do. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you in the next one. Keep asking your questions in the group. You guys are doing amazing. You guys are asking fantastic questions, and I'll see you next time.